So today what we're going to talk about is body powered terminal devices. What I'd like to go through is a little bit of when and why, um, but then do very specific details on those truly functional devices, our hook type terminal devices. Uh, so just so you know what's out there as far as body power, uh, we have passive hands, uh, which really are a really good option for those people who are looking for something that's actually cosmetic. And we'll talk in detail about how to select um, not only the hand, but the glove so that you get the appropriate size and color. Uh, the other option is mechanical hands, and these, um, well, they've been around for a long time, um, from the heavy-duty hands that uh, we used to get a long time ago, and then still we, we use quite often for those patients uh, that need something really heavy-duty but want something that look a little more cosmetic, uh, to the soft, voluntary closing hands, a little lighter, a little more modern that we, uh, that we can often use as well, that are a little less durable though, than these heavy-duty ones. Um, these devices unfortunately tend to be very heavy and they require a lot more uh, force to make function. So a lot of times these days, especially with patients becoming more comfortable with uh, a little more of a robotic cosmetic, uh, we tend to choose devices like these, whether it's a voluntary closed type uh, device from our TRS group or a voluntary open hook. Uh, so these will be the two that we'll spend our time with in this video. But also don't forget that there are a lot of activity specific type devices out there and we will uh, we'll get, we'll speak more about these in a video specific to activity at a later time. But don't forget that these are around as well. So let's dive into these two devices a little more closely. So one of the questions when deciding between a hook or a hand or any terminal device is really understanding the functionality that I'm trying to gain with that. So with a mechanical hand, I have a few challenges, and if I'm trying to pick up an object like this small piece of cabling, I'm going to come in with a mechanical hand and try to pick that up. I have basically no fingertips to grab with, and you have to imagine there's going to most likely be a glove on this because most mechanical hands are being used with a glove. This is a much less efficient, much heavier device than a hook, but it does give you some cosmetic appearance. So if I go in and try to grab this, now the other problem is I can't see that anymore. So I don't even know if I have a hold of it until I go to flip it around and see if I've actually picked it. Nope, still don't have it. So I don't know whether I'm picking the device up or not. So with a mechanical hand, that's one of the real challenges is I can't see through it. It's heavy, it's not very efficient, and I have no fine pin shot at the tip. Good for some things, especially when I want a more cosmetic appearance but not necessarily as great for some other things that I may want to be able to do. So the other thing that I can be using is this hook. And so this is a 5XA black. Uh, there's some benefits to using a hook. With a hook, it's extremely lightweight, very, very efficient, and I can see straight through it. So I don't have to wonder what's going on underneath. So when I come at it from the side, which is how this 5X type hook is designed, I can see quite straight through it, know that I have picked up this little piece and be able to manipulate this in any way I want to. Makes this very, very easy to use. And this is why most patients, especially patients that have been around for a while, tend to choose hooks over hands. When deciding for functional terminal device, one question that comes up is voluntary open or voluntary close. Uh, so I've got one of each device here, just so that we can kind of talk about the reasons that I may choose one over the other. So let's start with the hook. Hook's probably the most common that we're using, and this is a voluntary open device. So the voluntary open device, I'm going to be able to grab something and then I can let go. It doesn't matter. I can move this thing anywhere in space I want to, and I'm not going to let go, but I can hold it over here, I can hold it right here, I can hold it over there, and we don't have any problems. And then when I want to let go of it, I let go of it. Now, I'm limited. How strong this hook is? Well, that's controlled by these rubber bands, and how many rubber bands on here is well, how strong I can hold it. Not only that, it's how much force I always have to put on my sound side to pull that cable. So if you've got somebody with some sound side issues, it's something to think about, especially if they want to be able to produce a whole lot of force, because they're always gonna be pulling that same high load of force, even if they're just picking up something simple like this. Now, if we go to voluntary close, we get a couple challenges, but at the same time, we get some definite benefits. So one of the benefits is I only have to pull the cable as hard as it takes to close down the device and hold it in place. Now the downside is, is I've got to maintain that hold 
all the way around, no matter where I want to hold this thing. Now there's some options. We call it a uh, Sherlock, but it's a back lock for this device that the patient can activate with their sound side. So they don't have to worry about holding that cable, but it still does bring that up as a pro potential problem is that that patient's going to have to think about keeping this closed. But the nice thing is they can put as much force on this as they want to. In fact, uh, they can generate more force than a patient with a, um, with a myoelectric terminal device. So really this provides some neat extra benefits that that patient may be looking for with a lot of the same benefits that we've talked about before with having these more open hook type devices where we get this fine pinch and control of a lot of different objects in space. That gives you a little bit of an idea of when and why to choose these. Think a little bit also about the shape of your closure. So if I have somebody who's wanting to close in on a round device, this one's going to be a little bit easier than, say, a hook in the shape of a 5X. So that will hopefully help you select a little more clearly between these two types of devices. When we're talking about hooks, something comes up pretty frequently, and one of those things is how do I choose between different hook designs? So what I have here are two of our more popular designs. One of them is the number five style hook, and you'll know this as a 5XA, which is the nitrile coated aluminum one, which one this one is. This is the 5XA black. Uh, this is our 555 hook, and it's probably one of the most underutilized hooks that we have. Uh, so what I'd like to do is explain a little bit about why you may choose one over the other. So let's start with the 5XA hook. And really what this one about is about approaching things from the side. So if I'm replacing a dominant side hand, a lot of times this will be a good choice because I can do things like pick up a piece of paper and hold that and grasp that pretty easily because it's made to come in from this angle. That's why the hook and thumb are off angle like that. As you see, they're not quite 90 degrees, which we'll see is different on this 555 hook. So let's grab the 555 hook and see why this is a little bit different and may suit some patients better. So a 555 hook, where the 5XA is actually a canted hook, the 555 is a lyre shaped hook. And what that does is it gives us a cylindrical type grasp. So if I wanted to grab something like this bottle, I can get a hold of it because I'm using a cylindrical type grasp. The great thing about a cylindrical grasp is a supporting device. It's really good for that um, other hand. So a lot of times this is going to be your non-dominant type style hook because I'm going to reach over with my sound hand and unscrew the cap or do whatever I want to do. But this hook will allow me those grasp patterns that really support a sound other side. So let's take a look at another use on this. So one of the other great things is because this will sit nice and flat, I can also open it, grab things from the bottom. I can use this to support things on a table and hold them down. There's a lot of neat uses of this even split 555 hook, and you can see that thumb comes off at a direct 90 degrees. So its most common use angle is gonna be about right here, which is a little different from the 5XA. One thing to think about when doing these is sometimes you've got a bilateral patient. When these really come in handy is if I've got a bilateral patient, I'm going to give them one of each because then they have both options of grass patterns, which can really simplify what they're doing. So don't forget there are other shapes you need to consider. Okay, so now that we've decided on a canted hook, what a lot of people don't realize is we have a lot of options. So what I want to briefly go through is those options so you understand what those are. Um, one thing that will eliminate pretty quickly because we'll talk about this later, but this is a very specific option. These are work hooks. This is the number seven hook. Uh, we'll talk about those on a different video. These hooks here are going to be your number five hooks. These are what people are most commonly using. These are 5XAs. Now these are anodized. So in anodized, you can have black, gold, red, or blue. You can also have the raw 5XA in the silver color that's the standard aluminum hook. There's also a 5X titanium, so a 5X TI. And then there's a 5X, which is a stainless steel hook. And there's a number five hook, which is a stainless steel hook, but instead of having this nice nitrile coating, for somebody who wants something a little more aggressive, it actually has the same serrated teeth that a number seven hook has. So if you don't want to mar stuff up, this is probably not the best option. 
The most commonly used hook is probably the 5XA. We see a lot of those in use in the field. Do remember though that the coating uh, within the US is very different between these hooks. Uh, one of the most underutilized hooks is this 5X Titanium, uh, which is a better option for probably most patients because it's a much stronger hook. Um, it also uh, has actual decent reimbursement, so the clinician actually gets paid to provide a better product from the patient. So clinicians need to remember this 5XTI exists. Now if you want to understand the difference between them, they all have essentially the same shape. So a 5X aluminum and a 5XTI, well their main difference is this. If I have a stainless steel 5X hook, well the aluminum weighs about 50% and the titanium weighs about 60% but the titanium hook is gonna be as strong as the stainless steel hook. So if you have patients who are hanging a lot of weight off of this, these hooks aren't gonna bend on the titanium hooks in the same way that they would on an aluminum hook. Now, people will ask a lot of times what the shape of this hook is for, and what you do have to realize is there is a nice little old piece, a, a relic from the past here. Now now it's great for using as a, for holding pencils, it used to be actually for holding cigarettes. A little bit of trivia for you, um, but there are some little shapes in here that are for holding uh, with this device different things, including the little star shape down here at the bottom. So you've got some options with that hook. So what a lot of people don't know about these hooks, these canid hooks, is that they actually come in a lot of sizes too. So let's take a standard uh, number five hook. So the number five hook also, well, I can drop that down and now it's an 88 hook, an 88X. So the 88X is about a quarter of an inch shorter than the number five hook. So if I'm gonna add a medium size adult or smaller adult or a teenager, I may choose this hook over this hook for size. If that's a little big, I can actually go down again. So this is gonna be a 99X, which is the small adult hook. So I can go down a little bit shorter there. So I get another option. If the 99X is a little large, I actually can go down to the 10 hook. So this is a 10X, again, nitrile coated. So it's a little shorter than the 99 as well. And the 10X is gonna come and you get this option of a plastizol coating. Uh, a lot of people wonder what the plastizol coating about. And well, with a kid, now I gotta think, do I really want somebody going after another kid with a 5X hook? or do we want the plastizol coating that's gonna be a lot safer. So the plastizol is really a safety thing. It's gonna come in uh, two colors. You're gonna get either the light or the darker uh, plastizol coating. So you got some options for color there as well. With that, we go down to the smaller hook. So this is gonna be a size 12 hook and it only comes with the plastizol. So we have this nice safe hook for very small children. So there are a lot of different sizes here and as you're selecting these, you have to remember that those sizes are available. Not only are they available, but you may code them differently. Don't forget that your pediatric hooks are gonna get a different code than your adult hooks. One of the most commonly missed items. That is kind of the canted hooks, except for the sevens, which we'll talk about next. When you're deciding on hooks, sometimes you'll come down to those patients who are going to be doing a lot of heavy duty labor, and you wanna pick a hook that's really appropriate for that. We will usually start is gonna be the seven hooks. And the seven comes in two sizes, so we're gonna have a seven and a seven large opening. Sometimes people will ask what the difference is, and so the seven LO, seven large opening, has a much larger hole right in the center, and what that is about is if I've got somebody who's picking up large uh, tools like a hoe or a rake or a shovel that has a large diameter uh, shaft on the device. I want this to be able to close nicely on that. So I'm going to choose that seven large opening or seven LO in those cases where I have somebody who needs to be able to pick up and hold those larger items within that. Now the seven is probably the most commonly picked and this one has a little bit of a smaller opening but it has lots of functionality. So let's talk a little bit about each of those. One of the big ones is gonna be something to hold a knife. So if I place a knife right into that opening, I can hold this knife and I can actually cut things with that knife holder there on the top. Also, there's a small space, and it's gonna be a little hard to see here, but there's a small space right here for holding a nail. So if we wanted to hold this nail and hammer it in, we gotta place 
to hang on to that with the hook itself. On this, again, there's serrated teeth. So if we saw this in another video, there was a place where we we're able to uh, hold things with the serrated teeth and grip them tightly. Things are not going to move in there. Shape of the hook itself is made for holding things with a handle like a bucket. Very easy to keep control of those devices here. There are also two areas for holding tools. This large triangular opening or large diamond shape opening here in the middle is going to hold a tool here. Uh, frequently this would be used for something like maybe a chisel. And then we also have the tool opening in the top because there's a second place, a second diamond shape opening right there. So this is an extremely versatile device from the shape of the thumb to the shape of the hook on the end, the ability to push on things using these small tips, hold a knife, hold a nail, a lot of different things that somebody can do in a workshop that they may want to be able to do and they need a heavy duty device to do this with. Now this only is going to come in stainless steel. It's a somewhat heavier device, but extremely functional. Let's talk a little bit about the voluntary closing devices that we have. So these are the grip devices up here um, with a little something new we'll talk about at the end. And this is the ADEPT device. Uh, all have very similar voluntary closing function, but they have different constructions for kind of different purposes. So this would be a grip one type device. It has a stainless steel outer with a steel or, uh, with an aluminum core on the inside. Uh, this is available on a grip two device, which the grip two is going to have a titanium exterior, so it's going to be a little lighter than the grip one. This was a grip three, so the grip three is going to have a titanium construction with these plastic pieces, so you get this um, softer compliant grasp. Not quite as heavy duty, but certainly still very, very functional and very tough with this titanium outer. Then we're going to have the grip five device, which is going to have a metal interior, but it's surrounded by plastics to give you a softer feel, a more modern look, and some great functionality from both grip sources, but also the ability to touch with the sides of the device. So all of these three devices really are going to provide you with that same grasping functionality from a voluntary close. The ADEPT devices, which there are four sizes of those, give you some options for some smaller devices where they're going to be a plastic um, with a core on the inside, a metal core on the inside. You're going to get a plastic device that's going to be a little smaller, a little more sleek, and a little easier to hide. With that, you may choose to use this. Now, this is a side-mounted Sherlock device, and what this allows us to do is lock that voluntary open device closed. So if we release the Sherlock device, we're going to be able to let the hook open and close, and if I get it to a place where I want it, I can simply close that device, and it's going to allow it to stay closed. It's available on a surface mount and one that mounts down inside the device, and that lets you control these voluntary open device or voluntary closed devices when they're in different places out in space. So this really opens up the work envelope with a voluntary closed type device. So now you've seen the grip devices, so a one. And then it, with a titanium, this becomes a two, the three, the grip five. And then this is our newest device. And this one's interesting because this is kind of our first venture from the TRS group into voluntary open. So this is what we call the JAWS device. This one's really neat in that it is a new voluntary open style device from TRS, but it's really made to be able to grasp things without even having to pull on it. So it's really made for being able to grab devices or objects just by pushing on them. That's the way the teeth open. It also has this great ability to tighten that grasp. So once I get a hold of something, I can very simply grab and push this device up, and now I have a tighter hold on it, where if I pull it down, it has a lighter grasp, and I can still work it out of there. But if I was to grab onto something very tightly, crank this up, I now have a very tight hold on this piece that I'm working on, and you'll hear that snap close. Really a whole lot of force and a whole lot of function out of this new device we call the JAWS. That kind of covers this TRS version of these um, functional terminal devices.